we have real problems. The banks are lending and there's too much money in the system because these fools at the Federal Reserve with all their PhDs are out there printing thinking that it's going to be okay. And then they pretend that everything is fine. We only have two or 3% inflation when we actually have 15 to 20. I mean, look at everything that's out there, whether it's food or lumber or housing or, or oil, like everything has moved up. The labor market's all messed up. So, so what do you do? I mean, you, you really have to say, okay, it's my life. It's my responsibility. Or as Larry Wingett says, it's, it's your life. So, you know, sh shut up, stop whining, get a life. Your life is your own damn fault. That's reality. And unfortunately, a lot of people have been taught to become victims and blame somebody else. And then they say, well, government saved me. The, the reality is there's only going to, there's going to be two classes when we get done, the haves and the have nots, the have nots are the victims, the haves are the, are the responsible people. So everybody gets to choose. Are you a victim or are you responsible? Because if you're responsible, you're going to be a part of the haves. Everybody gets to choose that. Welcome to the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and I'm so excited that you're here. The Plan B CRNA podcast is the only show made specifically for nurse anesthetists who are exploring options outside of their traditional career paths. This is the place to expand your mind and your goals as we uncover new ways to produce side income together. Join me for some honest, unscripted discussions with other CRNAs who are transforming their financial lives. This episode is brought to you by On Call Capital. On Call Capital is dedicated to educating CRNAs and other healthcare providers about investing outside of the traditional stock market. On Call Capital also provides opportunities for you, yes, you, to create passive income and generational wealth while also lowering your taxable income through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that right now so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me today. And now on with the show. Welcome to another Provider Spotlight episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. For the first time on the show, my guest today is not a fellow healthcare provider, but with the proposed bills that are in Congress right now that are seeking to limit your IRA choices, our discussion today couldn't be more timely. Damian Lupo is the creator of the EQRP and is on a mission to free 1 million people from financial bondage. And he also rips apart conventional wisdom for the Main Street investor looking for truth about money and investing their own dollars. His strategy gives individuals total control of their retirement money to invest in real assets like real estate, gold, and cryptocurrency. Damien, I'm truly honored to have you on the show today. Privileged to be here. Thanks, Bobby. So I'd, I'd love to hear a little more about your background for our listeners. How did you get started and, and how did you find yourself where you are now? I got started because I was frustrating, frustrated working at my job and my job was selling insurance. And, and so this was back in the late nineties. And I, I said, you know what, I want to do something else. I read rich dad, poor dad, went to a conference. So basically saw an infomercial and I said, all right, I'm going to go out there and do some of this real estate stuff and, and started buying some houses. And that, that really snowballed over the next five years. And from going basically from a place where I had no money. In fact, my first house I bought with a credit card and took a cash advance out and bought the house. And that snowballed over five years into a portfolio of 150 houses, $20 million in, in assets. And within a few years, I was so smart and so rich that I lost 25 million when I only had 20. So that put me into a negative $5 million spot in 12 months. So that's a hell of a swing. And it, it taught me a lot about being over leveraged and thinking you know everything and about black swans that land on black swans. And so that was, that was the, the real estate investing background I spent a, a, almost a decade really focused on that. And then on the other side of that, I started asking some different questions about what is the purpose? Is it just money? Is it, and cause if it's just money, what I realized is it's never going to be enough. And that, you know, having, having a multi-million dollar net worth, basically coming from nothing and going there and then going to negative multi-millions, it, it really made me challenge the, the belief in America that having more money is better. I, I believe money is powerful and it's energy, but if you don't have a, a mission or a focus, it can really be destructive. And that's what it did for me. It gave me that lesson. And then on the other side of that, I asked a, a different question. What's the mission here outside of me? And that's where the EQRP came into being, where I started thinking about how can I serve people, teach them, use my experiences. And, and it evolved from there. And so that's what I've been doing the last decade is really focusing on a mission of freeing a million people from financial bondage, breaking those shackles that what I think is modern day slavery. Money is not a tool that's used by people, it's used against them. And you know, like when Jerome Powell prints 40% of the current money supply in six months, 
that's that's destructive for everybody that's out there doing what they're supposed to do, playing by the rules, because he's creating rules that are stealing from everybody. So we have to do something about that. Yeah. Well, and and so we we've said the acronym EQRP a couple of times now, but for those listeners um, that have never heard of this acronym, what is an EQRP? I'd love for you to explain what that is. Uh, the EQRP is an enhanced qualified retirement plan. It's an IRA killer. And the reason I say that is because IRAs are what you people used to do. And a lot of people still do them because they don't know any better, which is what we do. We do, we do the best we can with the information we have. And then when we have better information, we need to switch and do something different. So IRAs are what people would do. They do the self-directed self, you know, checkbook control IRAs. They've been doing that for years. And I even have one because I inherited one uh, with a few bucks in it. There's a reason for having them. And for the most part, that reason has gone away and it's about to totally go away with what Congress is doing with the reconciliation bill, which would basically make IRAs uh, unusable unless you wanted to buy stocks. Well, who the heck wants to just do that? Like they're probably not watching or listening to this if they just want to buy stocks. Yeah, no, you're probably right. Uh, a lot of people listening here are looking for that that next thing and and uh, looking to really diversify across a lot of different asset classes. And, and that's just hard to do. You can't avoid market risk if you invest in equities. So, um, you know, that's something, and, and you talked about checkbook control. So, so let's get into that a little bit. What is the difference between an EQRP and the utilization of one of those self-directed IRA accounts? Well, the, self, the self-directed IRA accounts still have a, a custodian involved. And so there's always, with IRA accounts, there's always a custodian, there's always friction, and there are different rules on what you can and can't do. The current proposed legislation, which I'm sure will pass basically in, intact in, in terms of the retirement stuff that's changing, de- destroys the checkbook control IRA, IRA. It goes away, literally gone away. There is no more checkbook control IRA. If you have one, it's being disqualified. You have to get out of it. And so what do you do? Well, either you go and you say, I'm going to put all my money in stocks or you shift gears and you move it into an EQRP. And at that point, you're able to have checkbook control. It's, it's not being targeted by Congress. And it, it won't be because 401ks are where the Wall Street system is basically making tons and tons of fees. They're just trying to get those fees back from IRAs. And so this gives you a chance to keep doing what you're doing. And the, the other thing that this, this bill is doing is it's, it's disqualifying anybody that's doing real estate investing in syndications from using their IRA. It's saying if you have to qualify, meaning you have to be an accredited investor or a sophisticated investor, then we're not going to let you do that anymore. This is a big Wall Street poll. Wall Street wanted to get all these, it's like $10 trillion that are in IRAs. And that's a lot of fees, man. When you're talking about a half to a 1% fee on $10 trillion, you're talking $100 billion a year in fees. They want that money back because they believe it's theirs. They believe you're too stupid to control your money and they should have it. So they're, they have lobbyists. They're very powerful. They may have more lobbyists than pharma does. And, and so they're, they're pushing. And bottom line is you've got two choices if you have IRAs. One, you just go do stocks and you sit there in equities and hope and pray and smoke a bunch of hopium and maybe it'll work out, which it won't. Or you say, I'm going to take control and an EQRP gives you the ability to have a checkbook for your retirement account. You can put 10 times as much money in, you can have leveraged uh, assets. That's one of the problems with IRAs in general. If you invest in something that has debt, so like a real estate deal that has debt, you're going to be taxed when that asset sells up to 37%. So That's only for IRAs. That's not for 401ks, for EQRPs. They're exempt. So there's really no good reason anymore for somebody to have an IRA. You you have less control. You're going to get taxed. Congress wants to go kill them because of Peter Thiel and his $5 billion Roth IRA. The bottom line is this is better information. It's a better product, better service, better control, real assets. And you don't have Congress out there trying to hit you in the butt on your investing. Yeah. Well, and that last point I think is a, is a big one. Um, is the EQRP just not being targeted because it's not big enough? Is that the, the general idea right now? Yeah, it's not being, it, it, here's the thing. It's funny because EQRP is, is part of the 401 section of the tax code and the 401 section is bigger than IRAs, but here's the problem, or I guess the benefit 401ks and pension plans fund a vast, like a massive amount of the real estate development in the United States, that and insurance companies, that's where they get big money. They're not going to go after something that's funding. It's very sophisticated money, right? you know, hundreds of millions and billions of dollars that go from these plans into real estate development. So that being said, that's not what Congress is targeting. They're targeting the rich guy that took $2,000 and turned it into $5 billion, And they're saying that's not what these were meant for. 
And so there, it's, it's more of a progressive uh, attack on wealth. They're not going to go after the thing that funds the real estate development in the United States. So EQRPs are part of that. And so they're, they're protected by that. They're protected by the system that is, is what's in place to build America. Okay. Okay. Now, so if somebody's wanting to start their own EQRP, how do they go about doing that? What are the requirements for, for being able to start one? Um, do you need to be a business owner? Do you need to have other requirements in place or how does that work? You need to have some type of business activity. So whether you're a sole proprietor, whether you're a doctor and you've got a side hustle, you can have an eBay store, you could have a, a company or a practice with up to 50 employees. Like the, an EQRP is pretty dynamic. It's, it's really built for anybody that, uh, that wants it. It's really a question of whether you should have it. It's not really whether you can have it. There's a lot of misconceptions and misunderstandings and confusion. Uh, a lot of the, it's funny, people will come and they'll say, well, I read on Google. I'm like, that's your first problem because anything you want to read is on Google. And there's some authority that will tell you fake news. You know, it's, it, that's really what we're, we're trying to process. Everything that we do is based on tax code and it's based on black and white, not opinion. It's just based on here's reality. So uh, it's, it's really the, the requirements are that you have some type of business activity. And, and so whether you're an employee or you have a company with 50 employees or five or, or whatever it is, if you're a doctor, there's a way for you to be able to do it. There's nobody that can't do it. There's actually nobody that can't do it uh, in, in America. If you don't have a social security number, if you're not, if you're out of the United States, this is not for you. Uh, but if you've got a social security number, then you are able to be able to be a participant and do this. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now, um, what does it look like to invest in different assets when you have this type of an account? Is it something where you you happen to have a checkbook on hand, or you have a credit card, or something that you use to to swipe or or you know pay for a, an item that you want to invest in? So, as the as the trustee of an EQRP, you have a you have a debit card, you have a wire ability, so you can literally wire right out of your account, and you have checks. So, if you find a deal and you say, like, we had a deal that we did not too long ago, and it funded over ten million dollars in three hours and forty five minutes, Ooh. you don't have time to get a custodian to give you permission and you know basically where you have to kiss the ring to do a deal. You got to have the ability to do it. So when people use their retirement accounts, the ones that were funding fast the next day were the ones that had EQRPs, the ones that were that are, you know, that took weeks, those are the IRAs. And in, in reality, the IRAs, we only had a couple of they were lucky. They were lucky that that they locked a spot. Um, typically IRAs are people are missing out on deals because they're too slow. So when you have an EQRP, you've got the ability to commit and fund within a day. Wow. That's, and that's pretty amazing in and of itself, because that's not something, I mean, I have uh, self-directed accounts and, and yeah, there's no way to get something done in a single day. No. So. And in, in fact, I mean, people are doing all sorts of assets. We mentioned physical gold, Bitcoin, uh, crypto. Mm -hmm. If you want to buy gold, you can buy it today. If you want to buy crypto, you can buy it and hold it in your hand today because you're the trustee. So you have the ability to control it. Cannot do that with an IRA. Can't hold the gold. You can't hold the, hold the crypto. It's got to be held by some other party, which creates counterparty risk because then you're just hoping that it doesn't go away. EQRP gives you the ability to control your assets. If you don't control them, they're not really real. They're just a paper or a derivative of something else. And that's really dangerous because you just think about all the different frauds and the different things that have gone on. You really need to be thinking, everybody needs to be thinking about controlling and holding it, your stuff as much as possible. Yeah, that's pretty powerful. Um, and I, I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, people are talking about cryptocurrency and, and the decentralized finance movement so much is because it is about taking back that control uh, f from the different entities that, that hold your money. Because, um, well, it's and, and there's, you know, when we talk about banks, the, the banks in our current monetary system, they're set up on the basis of leverage and the banks have to have some money to use leverage. But now that's been thrown out the window with you know the the recent um legislation that passed and now banks don't have to hold anything in order to just lend money so you know with, with those kinds of you know things that that are just being kind of disregarded now in the banking industry there's you know what kind of protections are in place for uh the little guy well the, the little guy has to be more responsible. I mean, they're, they're, all these things that are in place are all just fictitious. You know, they're, they're illusions like FDIC. I always laugh and I go, a quarter million dollars is something, but FDIC is broke. Like it doesn't have the resources. All we have is a bunch of systems that are based on the ability for the government to print, to borrow and print. 
But if the if the dollar loses its power, if if the confidence in the dollar and all all the dollar is is based on confidence, it's a collective delusion. So as long as that keeps going, we're relatively okay. But we do have inflation, and the the bottom line is people are the ones that are going to get hurt are the ones that are saying, oh, well, it's worked before, so it'll just keep working. It is not. That's I mean, we we have real inflation. We have real problems. The banks are lending, and there's too much money in the system because these fools at the Federal Reserve with all their PhDs are out there printing thinking that it's going to be okay and then they pretend that everything is fine we only have two or three percent inflation when we actually have 15 to 20 i mean look at everything that's out there whether it's food or lumber or housing or or oil like everything has moved up the labor market's all messed up so so what do you do i mean you, you really have to say okay it's my life it's my responsibility or as larry wing it says it's, it's your life so you know sh shut up stop whining get a life your life is your own damn fault that's reality and unfortunately, a lot of people have been taught to become victims and blame somebody else. And then they say, well, government save me. The, the reality is there's only going to, there's going to be two classes when we get done, the haves and the have nots, the have nots are the victims, the haves are the, are the responsible people. So everybody gets to choose. Are you a victim or are you responsible? Because if you're responsible, you're going to be a part of the haves. Everybody gets to choose that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and, and it's something too that, uh, I mean, we work very hard for our money. Um, people listen to this show, they, you know, you go to work. You, you work hard for it. If you're willing to spend that much time per week working for it, then you got to spend some time to protect it as well and, and to make sure that it's growing in the right ways and you know, that you're protecting your future uh, in the right way. And the world's shifting right now. I mean, it just is. Um, and, and so we've got to get on board with, with some of these changes. It's not even, you know, the, the world from, from even 10 years ago, this is all shifting. Um, as a result of not just the pandemic, but you know the the new monetary policies that are being instituted, all of that. Um, so I, I think, uh, yeah, you're probably preaching to the choir. But <laughs> um, so you know, there's obviously uh, you know this is the the legislation that's been put out there. Um, you know that that's something that I did uh, a YouTube video about, and you know I, I'm I'm hoping that after this you know, uh, show that you'll see, you know, a, a wave of EQRP accounts in the future, you know, but um, what are some of the other potential ripple effects that, that one could expect to see if these uh, changes to the IRA go through? Are we just going to see waves of people moving away from IRAs or, or just not utilizing them at all? We're going to, we're going to see a lot of people, we're going to see everybody that's doing self-directed IRAs outside of stocks going, uh, leaving them because the rules basically, they, they specifically say, an IRA cannot invest in a non-public company that requires any type of accreditation. So that's, I mean, the 506 stuff that you're talking about, the Reg D, that that's every private placement. That's and then when you have when you want actual checkbook control, it requires a single member LLC. They're saying that's disallowed. You can't do that. So they are are the self-directed IRA industry is going to get obliterated. They're they're going to have you're going to see companies go bankrupt. You're going to see a lot of layoffs. And I, I, I mean, there's a number of companies that I know this has been their focus and some of them are based in Texas, some of them are based in Florida, but they're going to get clobbered and there's nothing they can do about it because this is now the target of Congress. There's a progressive element with White, Ron Wyden in Oregon, Elizabeth Warren, AOC, these people that want to take away from the wealthy and all they're going to do is make the wealthy richer. Like you look at what happened in the pandemic and all this money that got flooded into the economy, where did it go? It went to the trillionaires. I mean, basically the trillionaire class is these guys that, and it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with creating service. It's like, it's not like they, it was stolen, but there's just a natural element. If you pump money into a system, it's going to end up in the same hands. And so, um, I mean, the, the outcome is that people are going to be pushed into wall street and, and because a lot of them are just, they're not going to know any better, but thanks to guys like you that are helping to educate people, that the people that hear this are going to realize, oh, I can actually do something where I can maintain control. I'm not going to be taxed. I can go to tax zero using Roth systems and real estate. Like there's some amazing things that can be done with the EQRP and people don't even realize it. I'm talking about a, the ability for people to take money out of retirement accounts tax-free to invest in real estate at any age, 40, 50 years old, take the money and then live on the cash flow. I'm talking about people retiring 10, 15, 20, 30 years earlier than they thought they could and not being taxed or penalized. That's what's available. That is not available with IRAs anymore. No, no, it's not. Um, and, and so that's, and, and so that last point is very interesting because the way that I've structured my own personal finances is that I have investments that are outside of my IRAs. I took money out of my IRAs 
and I put them into real estate investments. And so those produce cash for me to be able to live off of. But I also have other money that's in self-directed IRAs. So the idea that I could still be benefiting from the cash flow of those investments is, is a pretty powerful thing that I believe I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about <laughs> more after this show. But, uh, but yeah, so I, I do want to touch on one other point. Um, you know, we have talked about accredited investors and, you know, one of the things in the CRNA community, you know, the average income is 175,000 uh, a year. And so that means that there are plenty of investors that are considered to be sophisticated, which is below that $200,000 mark or above that $200,000 mark as well. Um, so what do you see happening with the accredited investor status with, with all of the changes that are happening now? I've, I've heard chatter in uh, the real estate and crypto communities about just getting rid of accredited investor status because it, it actually uh, doesn't help the, the people that it's intended to help. It actually just makes more paths for the wealthy to get wealthy, as, as you've talked about. So do you see that kind of an accredited investor status getting rewritten or being done away with completely? And why would that be? There, there's already some stuff that's changing around the sophistication uh, definition so that it would, if you do certain classes, if you have certain things like CPAs, or, and there's also some, some changes happening. I don't see that going away because it's a way for these, these elitists to say, oh, we're protecting the little guy. And unfortunately, if you make $175,000 a year, you're not accredited unless you get a million dollar net worth without your house. So a lot of people are stuck with retail investments. They're not able to do what Peter Thiel did. All Peter Thiel did was become an insider. So he went out and found something, a company, he, it was brought to him and he, he put a couple thousand dollars in, in using his IRA in, in 1999. And that couple thousand turned into 200,000 or 2 million in a few years because a company that he went into that was private went public. And he did the same thing over and over again. He's able to do that because he's an insider and he was already accredited. He could, he had access. So what they're doing is they're keeping, they're protecting wealthy people. And they think they're, and they're set, they say they're protecting the small people. No, they're not. They're, and it's like, and I say small people, I'm talking about small balance sheets. They're, they're, they're saying, we're going to, we're going to make sure we're protecting the, the people that can't protect themselves. They are creating and propagating and, and propelling a system of victims. Where people are like, well, I guess I just have to be protected. I need a, I need an overlord. I need, you know, I need somebody to protect me from the big bad whatever of the world. So I think that those rules will continue to be in place with crowd funding and and some of these things with the blockchain, where you can invest in in fractionalized, tokenized real estate, different things like that. It's changing the rules. And the, the funny part about government is government's slow, and so you have guys like Gensler and. And and Powell saying, well, we're not gonna we're not gonna do what China did with Bitcoin, and well, you can't anyway. It's decentralized. I, I love the arrogance of these guys saying, well, we're gonna, we, you know, we we're not gonna ban it. Yo, mofo, you can't ban it, dummy. It's a decentralized <laughs> system. Like to say that it shows that the arrogance and the pompous nature of these people. But they, you know, they're 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 wanting to be in control, and they have been with with the the fake money that's been printed. But that is that is shifting, and. Um, they're just too slow. I mean, the Federal Reserve, there's a talk about a centralized digital currency, which I believe is going to happen in every country. And it's probably, you know, two or three years out. Well, my, my expectation is Bitcoin is going to be a 10 trillion plus asset before they get this out. And, and that could happen by next year. So it's that the reality is timing. The free market and technology is exponentially faster than anything that government ever does or ever will do because it's based on very lethargic systems, very, very slow molasses frozen systems with people that have to have think tanks and committees. And meanwhile, people are disrupting everything at the speed of light. So there, there's going to be a lot of changes. And the reality is most people are going to be too busy in their own mind to go and engage this. And that, that means they're going to get run over by the train. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and and there's so much that we could keep talking about, but I, I do I do want to uh, respect your time. Is there something that we haven't gotten to today that uh, you feel like you'd like to talk about? Well, I think it's really important that uh, ultimately things are different. When we, we get confused because a lot of times people are trying to sell us something online um, in marketing. It's all about, oh, this is better and it's cheaper. And I, I think one of the messages that I want to leave with people with is across the board, whether it's your retirement stuff or it's a vehicle. You get what you pay for. And so be really careful that you're not cheap. Cheap people suck. 
Uh, it's and sometimes we we read books like The Millionaire Next Door and we go, oh, it's good to be cheap. No, it's not. It's terrible. It's terrible for your spirit because you're saying there's a scarcity that there's a Malthusian economic way of looking at things where there's a limited set of resources and that is BS. Technology is changing all of that. And you want to be really mindful. You want the best. You want the best advisors. You want the best team. You want the best products. And so when you're thinking about your retirement, there's a lot of things out there that are free and you get what you pay for. So if you go out there and you decide, I'm going to have a free IRA or a free 401k, trust me, you're going to get exactly what you're paying for. Be really mindful of that. You want the best because the best doesn't cost you anything. It's like having a team. Do you go out and get the C's? Yeah, they're cheaper and they're going to cost you. They're going to be a liability. When you have A players, they make the company money. They don't cost anything. So always think about that when you're thinking about what you're going to do. If you want to have control of your retirement account, an EQRP is the A game. It's the Ferrari. And, and it's, it's an appropriately structured and priced vehicle, and you have a team behind it. I just think it's really important for us to think about that in terms of everything we buy. You can get a bag of Fritos that's really cheap, or you can have organic fruit and vegetables at a store. And one thing is really cheap, and one's expensive, except the cheap one costs you in the long run. And so I think people need to really keep that in mind as we're going forward, because we're going towards zero. Things are going to cost zero, and you're going to get what you pay for. So it doesn't mean that you're getting a bargain. You maybe become the product like on Facebook. It's it's free, except it's basically eating you. Yeah. Well, and and I, you know, I always go back to um, you know, the the saying from Brandon Turner on bigger pockets. You gotta have, you know, money, hustle, or knowledge. And and you gotta have two of those three. And so, I mean, if you if you're not gonna pay for experts to to do certain things for you, you're either gonna have to get that knowledge yourself and figure out how to do it, which for a lot of this stuff is incredibly, incredibly time consuming. And when you're talking about the tax code that changes all the time, it's damn near impossible to do. Um, so why not have a, a team of experts that are, are you know, helping you out um, and, and allowing you to truly diversify your income and take advantage of, you know, as you said, the, the, the best plans that there are out there. So and it's, um, it's, it's what I, I've heard Robert Kiyosaki say this for years. He said it when we were in Belize a couple months ago together. And it's, it's this idea of being lazy. It doesn't mean you sit on the couch and don't do anything. You spend your time thinking about putting things together, meaning putting people together, putting teams together. It's we, like you mentioned, we don't have enough time to go learn everything. I, there is a doctor I ran into in Belize and I, and he had, he'd, he'd shoot it up about an hour of my time. I, I described everything we did. And then I found out six months later, he went off and, and I thought he had done everything and built himself a retirement plan. And he literally built it wrong and disqualified himself so he could save a little bit of money. So I think he saved himself $1,000 and probably cost himself $100,000 in taxes because he was, he was cheap. And, and I basically won't work with somebody like that. I don't want to even be near them because they, they, it, like I have a little vomit in my mouth thinking about something like that where somebody is that cheap. And it's because, unfortunately, a lot of doctors are so smart. They go, oh, I can do anything. Yeah, you can, but you shouldn't. It's like, can you, like, I used to ask this question all the time, Bobby, I would say, uh, how can I do something? I, I got this from Kiyosaki because he, he would say, stop saying you can't do something. How can I afford it? Well, then I asked a better question years later after I bought everything, including Ferraris. I said, should I afford this? Like, is this a good idea? And that's, that's the thing. Should you go and become your own lawyer? Like I have a doctor friend of mine that said, I may just shift gears and and go and, and get a, uh, my, my Juris Doctor and become a lawyer if this doctoring thing doesn't work out so great. And I was like, you are a dumbass. Why would you do that? It's, that's not the answer. More education in a specialized space is not going to necessarily be the right thing because the amount of time it takes versus writing a check to somebody and you can cut years. That's the one priceless thing. We all have the same amount of time. You got to be buying. Rich people, here's something everybody should pay attention to. Like, think about this. Rich people buy time. Poor people and middle-class people sell their time. So just ask yourself, what are you doing? Are you trading your time? Or are you trading your dollars? Which one are you getting and which one are you giving? If you're, if you're taking your checkbook and you're writing and you're buying somebody else's time, you're doing the right thing and you're going to be rich. If you're over there saying, well, I charge $300 an hour, or $1,000 an hour, you're going to run out of time and you're never going to be rich. So it's something for everybody to think about. That's the difference between rich and poor. Yeah. You got to find a way to make money while you're sleeping. Yeah. So that's, 100%. that's a big part of it. And, and yeah, I, I, I love that, that last thought there. Um, you know, I, I, I often say that, um, you know, rich people have money, but wealthy people have time and, uh, that's it. 
you know, that's, that's what I try to stick by and, and try to live by. But, uh, well, Damien, this has been just a, a wonderful, wonderful show, wonderful pleasure to have you here. Um, how can folks who are interested in learning more about what you have to offer, find out more about you? Best thing to do is go grab a copy of the book, uh, qrpbook.com and check it out. It will send you a copy. It's on us. I'm not going to charge you $7.95 for shipping. I'm just going to literally email you a summation of it. And I'm going to send you a physical book via FedEx. So qrpbook.com, grab a copy and, and then learn more. Uh, you're going to learn enough to go, I need to do something. And that's the whole point. It's to give you enough to take a little bit of action right now. That'll change your life. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks again for being here. Happy to do it. Happy anytime to see you. What a treat it was to have Damien on the show today. I appreciate how he talked about his journey and learning that there's more to life than money. And it doesn't matter how much you make or how comfortable your job is. Life can humble you in an instant. Damien truly wants to contribute more to society, focusing his efforts on helping others out of that financial bondage that the traditional systems can place us in. Investors are finding more and more ways to invest outside of the stock market than ever before as technology continues to rapidly evolve. And of course, those who have typically benefited from huge financial fees and the previous retirement monopoly aren't too happy about these changes. This disruption has upset the banking industry, and they are putting massive pressure on legislators to force Pandora back into the box. The time is now to plan ahead for what's coming. There are ways to keep your money protected and growing for your family. The EQRP represents a fantastic way to do just that. If you're listening to this show, there's a high chance that you already have some kind of 1099 or side hustle business that qualifies you for one of these retirement plans. So I highly encourage you to call up Damien's team and talk with them. I know that I plan to. Now, I hope you enjoyed this really unique conversation. If you'd like to hear more specialized content like this in the future, please make sure you let me know in a review on your podcast player. That's going to do it for me today. I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.